Hey everyone, it's Bill here again with JK Southwest. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate everybody watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure you click that subscribe button down below. Put out new videos all the time and I'd hate for you to miss them. So we're out here on another trail ride out here in Southern Nevada. And uh, it's really warming up because it's summertime. We found a spot to take a quick break and uh, I thought I'd chat with you here. I've had a ton of questions again about my Jeep and uh, most specifically about the communications and what I use for radios in my Jeep. So while we have this chance, I thought I'd uh, real quick fill you in on what I've been using. All right, so probably the most common form of communications off-road is CB. CB's been around a long time. Uh, it's pretty inexpensive. There's no licensing required and, and people are generally pretty comfortable with it. Uh, I'm running a Cobra 75 WSXT, WXST, I forget. Uh, I'll put a link down below in the description to the CB I've got. It's one of the all-in-one handheld units. Um, there is a small control box for power and the antenna hookup that you tuck under the dash, but all the controls are right in the handheld mic. Uh, it's been a great CB for me. I'm running it through a three-foot fire stick antenna hanging off the back. CB communication is, is really common off-road. CB is generally limited to four watts of power, so your range is gonna be limited. The best you can really expect to get out of a CB is about a mile in range, but that's really gonna depend on the terrain. Uh, I know I've been in groups of just 10 to 12 Jeeps where the front Jeep can't talk to the back Jeep. We gotta relay messages. But as long as the group is small and the terrain cooperates, you should get pretty good communication out of it. If you go to any of the big organized runs or the Jeep Jamborees and probably even your local club runs, they're going to require a CB for communications. Again, because it's inexpensive, it's common, and people are familiar with it. So soon after CB reached its peak craze in the 70s, people started asking for more frequencies to get away from all the congestion on the radios. So the FCC came up with a bunch of frequencies that they assigned to the FRS GMRS range. Uh, these radios you're already familiar with. They're the little handheld walkie-talkie type radios that you can get at the sporting goods stores and in the blister packs at the big box stores. They're like the little handheld walkie-talkies. The FRS and the GMRS are a little bit different. FRS radios are limited to half a watt in power. The GMRS radios can have 5 watts in a handheld, up to 40 or 50 watts in a mobile unit that you can mount in your Jeep. So. You can get quite a bit more range out of a GMRS radio. There are some repeaters available for GMRS too if they're in your area. So with that, you can greatly extend your range. So these radios are pretty handy. You can get about the same range as CB, a mile or so out of these. Again, it's gonna really depend on the terrain you've got. But they're really handy because they're inexpensive. Uh, you can get a pack of two or three of them for 40 or $50. Um, they're easy enough to pass out to everybody in the group if they don't have a radio. And that's why I've got these. Sometimes you get in a group of folks and someone doesn't have a radio yet, you can toss them one of these and then they've got communication with you. These handheld units are pretty handy if you leave the Jeep. If you need to be spotting someone over an obstacle, it's great. You can take a handheld out and talk to the person in the Jeep. If you leave the Jeep to go on a hike, you can keep the group together communications wise with these little handheld radios as well. So again, there's lots of different folks making these radios. Uh, these are from Midland and from Motorola, but I know there's other brands. I'll put a link to these two down in the description below so you can check these out. All right, so getting back to it, I'm also running a ham radio on my Jeep. Now ham radio is considered by many to be the holy grail of communications, but it's also shrouded in a lot of mystery and confusion. But it really works just like the other radios except that you're operating on frequencies instead of pre-established channels. Now, to operate legally on ham radio, you need to be licensed by the FCC. I went ahead and got my technician's license, so I'm good to go. If you're looking at a ham radio, I really encourage you to do it. The test is pretty simple. It's really inexpensive. You can get licensed, so you just have no problems. I'm running a radio 
made by Rugged Radio. It's one of their race radios. I know they're not super clear about whether or not you need a license to operate on these race radios made by Rugged or PCI, but you do. So go ahead and get your license. I'm running their RM60. It's a radio that puts out 60 watts of power. I have the VHF version. It's worked great for me. I routinely get 15, 20 miles out of this radio setup without hitting a repeater. If you hit a repeater, you're talking hundreds of miles of range on communication. So it really is beneficial and it can be worth your time. Along with the mobile radio that's built into the Jeep, I'm also running a little handheld ham radio. Again, they're handy when you get out of the Jeep. If you need to spot, you need to leave the Jeep to go on a hike, you still got communications back. This is one of the little Baofeng UV5R radios. They're $20 on Amazon. You can get two or three of these, toss them in the back of the Jeep, and you're good to go. Again, I'll put a link to these in the description down below if you want to check them out. So there you go. There's a quick down and dirty on the uh, radios and the communications I've got available to me in my Jeep. So what should you use? Well, that really depends. You need to get together with the group of folks that you go wheeling with and find out what they're using because ultimately they're the ones you need to be able to communicate with. There's pros and cons to the CB. There's pros and cons to the FRS, GMRS radios. And there's definitely pros and cons to the ham radio. So do your research. There's tons of inf information out there on the web about all these systems. Again, I put links to the, what I've got down below in the description. And let me know what you're using for communications. Maybe you've stumbled across something better. I'm not saying what I've got is the best. All I know is it works for me, the folks I go wheeling with, and the area that we go wheeling in. So again, let me know what you're using. Let me know if you have any more questions about my Jeep and I'll uh, answer those in another video.